Yeah, it's just strange being kind of ridiculed in the press. You haven't looked at the examples. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Honestly, never used Tinder. <laughs> We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Welcome to episode 25 of the Business Anchors Podcast. Fun fact, Tupac died at age 25. Let's hope this podcast doesn't. We're talking about comparing ourselves to others, shit New Year's resolutions, and the popular segment, Dan helping us be good at business, is returning. It's going to be a good one. They always are, Dan. I feel like after my intros, you feel like you need to reassure the the, uh, yeah. the audience that it's going to be good. Yeah, I feel like do I you need think, to. Do you think my intros make it sound like it's going to be shit? Well, that took you about five goes to go through it, so yeah, I'm just sick of it oh, by the they end. they don't know that, though, Dan. Oh, okay. They didn't hear that. They just think well, I've just Dan, got, you got that in the end. But, yeah, I got, I got that first time. Mm. <laughs> oh, good. So, comparing yourself to other people, Lloyd... Yeah. Who do you compare yourself to? Um, I usually compare myself to people that aren't achieving as much as I want to to make myself feel good. That's quite a good, that's a clever approach. Yeah, you just set your targets really low. Um, so each day... You're I'm just, just absolutely smashing yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely smashing it. Can you name some of those people that you compare yourself to? <laughs> <laughs> They're not. No, I actually, uh, wanted to, I actually wanted to talk about this because mm. of something that happened this week. And I haven't told you the second part of this, actually. Okay. So earlier this week, I um, I was scrolling through social media and I discovered this up-and-coming agency. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like 50 people and what, what they're doing looks really cool. And I was watching some of their content and uh, it just... This was early on in the week. I was looking at their website, looking at what they do, and it really, really, really motivated me to want to do better mm. um, and I when I was away I was supposed to be on holiday last week and I came in and worked because I was genuinely internally motivated to think if they can do it we can do it so mm. I wanted to and it really motivated me and it, it, it just got me thinking like you know lots of people say don't compare yourself to others Yeah, I actually had a really positive experience of comparing myself mm. to others but I don't nice. know what well do I think? You say people say don't compare yourself to others. Um, I don't know who says that. <laughs> but <laughs> People do say that, don't they? Do they? <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing comparing yourself to others if you're thinking like, I have to be as good at mm. that person. Because uh, in this aspect of my life, so say on Instagram, I have to look that good as that Instagram mm. model. Um, but then also at work you're saying oh I have to be as successful as Gary V mm. because in reality like most people don't have the responsibilities and other things in their life like the same things you do so that Instagram yeah. model is dedicating their life to looking like that but mm. they they may be failing in lots of other areas mm, of their life don't know about. Where it's, so if you're comparing yourself to all these people that are great in these areas and you're thinking, oh, yeah. I should be great in all these areas. It's yeah. it's not realistic. But comparing yourself to someone as a like motivation and to think, yeah, yeah. I can do that is is a good thing, I guess. But then flipping on his head, part two of the mm. story. Yeah. Yesterday, I was in the office on my own, and every now and again, I was sifting through social media. Yeah. And I started looking more. You were, you were doing what? Why are you working? Yeah, exactly. I was Bloody doing. I had one of those days where I just was busy all day but didn't feel like I got much done yeah. so I was on social media yeah. and I looked at what they were doing and then I actually started to feel rubbish because then I started to look at wh- what we're doing and I thought hmm. ours isn't as good as that hmm. we could be doing better in these, these small parts of what we do I thought hmm. that needs to improve that needs to improve and then yeah. I felt a bit down hmm. which is really weird because earlier on in the week I'd really hmm. m- built myself up hmm. and then it so I guess I don't know it's weird it can work both ways can't it hmm. But I, I think it's that's just a realistic picture of our business at the moment, to be honest, Dan. Like, there's some things I think we're doing well at, but I think especially uh, over the last kind of month, I think I've realised there's a lot of areas of our business we can really improve, and there's there's lots of things I don't feel we're doing well enough at. Mm. Um, I'm happy that we're delivering good, um, good results for our clients, and our clients are happy, but as in business I'm growth and things that, yeah that's what I mean things that are going to help us grow our business and improve what we're doing I think 
there's a lot of things we're not at the level we want to be yeah. um so yeah it's going to take hard work but i suppose that's the reality of of life isn't it like mm. there are some things that is really yeah. you're going to feel positive about and some things um not so much but yeah so do you where, where are you now feeling positive no, I feel or much negative better now. about i feel much better now mm. i think what helped me feel better was also the realization of compare like comparing apples with apples and not apples with pears mm. so you, it's very easy to look at you know your example of these instagram models or whatever or my example of mm. another agency who's got way more people and working with more brands mm -hmm. and stuff and to think they're like where they are in their journey is somewhere different to us so you can't yeah compare those two things so i guess i think that helped me and also i did this weird thing in my head where i because uh, i felt a bit rubbish i like thought to myself this sounds really stupid but yeah. i thought to myself what am i grateful for and mm. then i thought of all these amazing things outside of work and inside of work yeah and then i just thought that just makes everything else completely irrelevant all these silly little comparisons i've been doing in my mm. mind mm. all those other amazing things made you feel yeah. better it's hard so basically do the comparisons that make you feel good and want to <laughs> do better don't don't compare yourself and well no be. i think this is the thing this is why i think it's difficult because i I don't want to sit here and say compare yourself with others because it will motivate you but don't because I think it really depends on the situation but and they mm. were just two of the similar situations that I in my mind responded completely differently to so I don't know what my advice would be but good luck <laughs> thank you Dan no actually no, my, my advice would be the apples with apples thing yeah that's definitely one piece of advice you know you could mm. compare yourself but never compare yourself and judge yourself with someone who's like five years different. ahead of you or yeah. they've had other variables that you know they've had a million pound investment and you haven't or yeah. that kind of thing yeah yeah nice yeah, okay so that, yeah, that, that, was... that was insightful that end bit Dan good right, that was a better ending than yeah just <laughs> good, good luck <laughs> good nice um, um oh sorry were you, were you going to say something Kurt no, no, I was just co host gonna, of the business I was going to think podcast. of a good tangent into the next point but oh. I couldn't think of one okay do you want me to <laughs> yeah go on um, so, uh, comparing yourself with other people, yeah. uh, what about comparing your actions this year to next year? Um, you know, things, you know, we could talk about something like New Year's resolutions. That was a um, very good segue. Well done. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to talk about, like, as we're, this podcast is going live in December, we're recording in December, end of 2020, very strange year for a lot of us. For obvious reasons, mm. um, and this is the Christmas episode, is it? Well, the closest to Christmas, yeah, I think maybe not. No, in, in our, I asked you this yesterday, and in our preparation, oh, you said it's not. It? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, ignore me. Yeah, <laughs> just just <laughs> ignore what Dan said. <laughs> it's not Christmas actually. That's next week. Sorry, um, Karen. Sorry if I, if I put you off. Yeah, I can't remember anything else. Talking you you just suddenly told me it was Christmas. So, and sorry, talking of New Year's resolutions. Um, yeah, so I was saying it's been a strange year for a lot of people. Mm. And I was going to ask you, Dan, are you making any New Year's resolutions? Do you have any like crazy goals that you want to achieve next year personally or for the business or any thoughts? I haven't um, sat down and properly written these down yet, um, but... Dan. I've got some loose ones that I've been thinking about. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Are these the Chinese proverbs that you're going to be reading again? <laughs> no, like, I haven't I've got any of those. Don't worry. No, so I think uh, I I haven't yet. I've got some loose ones. I, I've got some kind of categories around health, work, family, and giving, which mm. is isn't the giving part doesn't come as naturally to me as you. So this is why I actually want to sit down and think about all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I've got some categories, but not yet come up with a specific sort of goals what about mm. you um i do you know what i've got one big goal that i spoke about last um last episode which i mean even even in the time since then i'm less motivated about um, <laughs> <laughs> um of of planting a million trees i, I basically wanted to take on a, a massive challenge that seems completely unattainable mm. um and just really go for it and get creative and see what mm. I can achieve in a year. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm a bit with myself and motivation and setting goals. I guess I'm not in the best place 
with it mentally because every I would say every year for the last decade on January 1st I say this is the year Lloyd where we're going to get fit and healthy Mm. we're not going to eat shit and be fat and we're going to be healthy and exercise and that week it goes really well Mm. sometimes that month it goes well sometimes for three months it goes well and then then it doesn't yeah um and I guess it's, it might be an interesting thing to talk about. Like I, I basically now feel like I don't want to set news resolutions because it's, it's a waste of time because mm. I never stick to them. Mm. What do you think about that? I think, I think the whole New Year's resolution thing is a bit of a gimmick, really. Mm. So I'd, I, just, I think we should all be setting ourselves sort of goals and things like that. But just because mm. it's New Year, you should be... Just because it's new, you shouldn't have to wait to New Year to be fit and healthy. Because my, what my really good plan is, Dan. Yeah. I'm just gonna eat loads of crap food until for the whole of December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know in January I'll change it. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm gonna uh, then I'm gonna eat healthily for a week. <laughs> you're um, you're so, communicating the exact so, point I'm trying to say. Yeah. So well done. That is it, though, isn't it? Of like actually setting like January. Yeah. Then uh, in the future I'm gonna do yeah. that. Why? Why wouldn't like if I know that I want to achieve something next year? Why don't I start now? Yeah. Because it's... And you can get into that thing of like actually doing worse. Like I was saying then, I'm going to eat healthy in January. So I'm just going to absolutely stuff yeah. my face and not exercise in December. Yeah. Um, which is... no. It's always like, it's again, with health, it's like diet starts on Monday. I think a lot of people have like a binge of like yeah. bad food and not being active at the weekend saying yeah because my uh, my diet starting monday and it's just a repeat every week basically i also think with the state the world's in mm. i don't think we should be putting so much pressure on ourselves that suddenly we need to be this new thing and yeah. be the healthiest person in the world and grow a hugely successful business and Hashtag i think you knew me i think it's yeah i think it's really good to set these goals mm. i also think we're living in the most mental time we've ever lived in and yeah. just you know continuing and being happy and ensuring you and your family and stuff are happy and helping others and things like that is a good yeah so i don't know i've i don't i don't want to be demotivating and say don't set massive Mm. goals i think that is good but Mm. also don't put so much pressure on yourself that it's Mm. crippling and then you just hate your life i also i think the reason why i'm less i think that's kind of similar to why i don't want i've been less reluctant to have like new year's resolutions this year I'm trying to really think of like one new year's res- like one thing to focus on and mm. be like my energy is going to be focused on that mm. because I think in the past and I think a lot of people will relate to this you you get in a good spot in motivation and then you you say like this year I'm going to exercise do this, do seven times a week mm. I'm going to um, grow my business uh, so it's five times as big mm. I'm going to learn <laughs> the recorder um, and I'm going to give. 50% of my wages yeah. to other people. It's just people. all too much. And then, then after a week of not having enough <laughs> money to live uh, whilst having to buy a recorder <laughs> and yeah. exercise all the time and yeah. spend all your time, it's, it's unachievable. And yeah. then it all goes down the pan. And I think that could, that's my weakness. And, you know, similarly to mm. what I've spoken, to, spoken about in previous episodes of having all mm. these things I want to do and then feeling shit about it. Mm. I think it's the same thing of if you set too much unrealistic goals too many things yeah. you're less likely to achieve do you know it. who else does that who mark zuckerberg does what oh yeah the founder of facebook every year he sets himself a change like learn learn chinese mm. i can't remember what his one this year was i don't i don't know this year but i know like one was learn mandarin and then yeah. one was le- read like it's read something like read about a certain amount of books. 200 books in a year yeah, or something. Yeah. so like a book every couple so i think of days. he just obviously i'm sure he's got loads of other things going on obviously mm. but i think in his own per with his personal development he sets himself one core thing so mm. that could be good to do i do think it's a good i mean it's easy it's much easier if you wake up each morning like i said if you're thinking like I've got to do my recorder practice got to grow my business got it <laughs> yeah. um it's hard but if if each morning you're kind of like oh what should i do this evening and you yeah. know that there's this one, one thing mm. so like me saying i wanted to plant a mi- well facilitate planting mm. a million trees mm. if i've got an hour of time that i think i can do something with it's not me thinking shall i spend more time at work shall i go and do charity work it's like shall i do an hour workout shall i you know what that thing is it's like I'm I'm going to do this because mm. I know that's my main goal. Mm. But at the same time, it's kind of like I mean I don't want to just 
I'm never going to exercise because I'm just, yeah. you know, it's. it's I yeah, want us to. Hard. We're going on this walk, aren't we? Uh, nearer Christmas. Mm. Mm. I want. I'm just saying to you. Mm. I want to talk about goals. Yeah. Because I, I, I want. I want to actually really think about what the different things yeah. are, or maybe my one thing. Yeah. Because I haven't. I think it's weird. Like. Saying we haven't got goals, we've got the whole 2030 plan with the business. We literally know mm. every month what our growth should be mm. to get there. So th- we have got goals and stuff, yeah, but I yeah. think it's more of a broader focus. Mm. Yeah. Cool. We'll update you on that walk, guys. We're gonna, every year we do something where Dan and I spend a day away from everyone and try and kind of set us up for the next year in business and what our goals are and stuff. We were in a freezing year last year. Do you yeah. remember that? <laughs> New Year's. Fully uh, clothed in a bed. It was day four New Year's Eve, wasn't it? Yeah. We, Dan and I, booked a... Yeah, I think mostly it was probably booked out for a romantic getaway. <laughs> um, but this time, Mr. and Mr. Knowlton checked in, so they probably thought it was the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we put the fire... It had like a log fire, but then it burnt out in the middle of the we, night. And then we, yeah. I, we were fully oh, clothed like, in coats and stuff yeah. un, under a quilt, and yeah. it was still freezing. Yeah, that was weird. But uh, yeah. yeah, we had a good chat. A good good set i think it's good like that getting away from it, everything and kind of setting yourself up for the yeah. year ahead um it's nice nice walks in the forest we did yeah um yeah that was a weird trip but that was good <laughs> yeah um right moving on um can i can i read something to you please do the utter ignominy is that a, is that a word the utter ig- Ign- ignominy just go with it. Okay. The shame, the anger. Last week, the county of Kent was placed bodily. I should have read this before. Anyway, last week, the county of Kent was placed bodily in tier three, all because the ghastly virus added. Oh my God, I can't read. <laughs> Right, so, uh, business anchors, listeners, I feel I need to apologise to you. I'm supposed to be a professional host of a podcast, and I've let you all down. I've tried to say two sentences, and I've really failed. There is some words that I haven't I seen. Just, I just hope you can forgive me. Just read the blinking And now I'm going to do it again. Listen to this perfect professional delivery. The utter ignominy, the shame, the anger. Last week, the county of Kent was placed bodily in Tier 3, all because the ghastly virus-addled plebs in Thanet can't stop breathing over one another as they swallow jellied eels in some dilapidated, phlegm-strewn seaside slum. That's nice, isn't Um, it? That was was in the Times last week. Um, I can't believe we're in Kent as well, but those people in Thanet. Oh, God, Thanet. Those, what, you mean those dilapidated, phlegm-strewn seaside yeah. slum They've made us dwellers. all go back into God. lockdown. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about this, really, because there's been... So that was a pretty crazy um, article, just absolutely slating people living in Thanet. We're, we're currently in Thanet. We live and work in Thanet. Um, I think we're currently at number three. As, t- as we're recording... Number three in the UK of uh, mm. of uh, COVID numbers. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> terrible podcast hosts. <laughs> um, and it's just very strange being at the heart of kind of national news of like and being described mm. like that as if we're all kind of running around shopping centres, licking handrails and <laughs> snogging each other. I mean, you do that the weekends. <laughs> I do, but no one else does. Um, that you spend your weekends but yeah it's quite strange being the, being the ones that are being criticised mm. and again we we asked about this podcast because we've we've moved further away from each other mm. um, than pre-COVID and most of the time our business we're all working from home mm. um, so I think we're taking positive action but um, yeah it's just strange being kind of ridiculed in the press for yeah. our little our little part of the world yeah and uh just so you know um uh, the times never <laughs> even eaten jelly deals so <laughs> yeah. have you i've eaten what are those rolled up sort of are they rolled up i'm sure dad's given me i don't know some kind of fish is that's not, rolled up and pickled or oh, is that roll mops roll mops that's like <laughs> herring isn't it <laughs> oh, okay i think that's more scandinavian isn't oh. it yeah um roll mops but yeah Business anchors, let us know what you think of people in Thanet. How have you judged us after reading articles about... <laughs> I just think it's crazy, like, people writing stuff like that. Like, reading that, 
they clearly have no idea what Thanet is actually like. Mm. I was reading it thinking, yeah, I've lived here all my life. That's mm. that's nothing like yeah. what what this place is. Depends where you hang out. I, well, it's a very varied, but clearly that's what they yeah. they don't get. And I think I don't know. It just the article um, seemed very much like oh, I'm this middle-class person that thinks I'm better than everyone yeah. and I'm going to speak about this area. Very... F.U. times. Yeah. <laughs> come, come Writer of that article, come on a guest. Uh, come on a guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't, don't, don't listen to Lloyd's advice. Don't come on a guest. <laughs> that would be an awkward Christmas. Um, <laughs> come on our podcast as a guest. <laughs> Um, and explain yourself, please, because <laughs> obviously you're going to listen to this because, you know, we're a top 20 marketing podcast, so you're definitely going to hear this. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, just please ignore my first request. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely not the advice I want to give. <laughs> moving swiftly moving on. Moving swiftly on to the segment that is Dan, Dan helping us be good, good at business. Um, Dan, cool. I, I really feel you need to take the limelight away from me because yes, I'm I just will. doing a terrible job I'm gonna, I'm gonna whiz through a few of the cool things I found this week cool so <laughs> I failed this little coin <laughs> <laughs> show and tell first thing you know like as a social media marketer mm. you constantly want to find things to tie in content to like pop culture things that are going on mm-hmm. it, the Grammys are happening or some kind of trends like flossing but you want to think of what these things are throughout the year yeah not your boring like you know the, the least creative way to do it is national donut day yeah. which is terrible but then there's loads of other it's so obvious when you spot that people are using those yeah. kind of calendars it's like a oh we're an event <laughs> company in in canterbury oh, gonna get some donuts today it's national donut day <laughs> Ooh, the creativity su- of that surprisingly your post has got no engagement <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, carry on, Dan. <laughs> so, um, there's a website, forecast.com, F-O-R-E-K-A-S-T.com. It's a calendar with l- all that cool stuff. Um, donut Day. <laughs> not Donut Day. That um, Yeah, that you can link content to, which is cool. Next thing, th- I think this is mental. Okay. Right. How would you... Handwritten uh, letters. How would you handwritten no, letters? No, I'm not finished. Imagine how would you handwritten imagine letters? Imagine you wanted to send handwritten letters as part of your marketing strategy. Okay. How would you scale that up? So like let's say you scale up handwritten letters. Yeah. I would argue so you've it got, can't be scaled up. You've got 10,000 customers you want to send handwritten letters to. Yeah, I would say can't be scaled up. Wrong. <laughs> Roboquill.io. Okay. Robotic handwriting. AI uh, robotic handwriting. They've got machines that handwrite letters. I've seen so, these letters. So is, it's are the letters actually all different then? Like they look different? Yes, you can choose the handwriting you want. It's mental. It looks yeah, like but, a... But I'm saying like anyone can photocopy some handwriting. No, it's literally written with a pen. It's written with a pen. Yes, I get that. Yeah. And it sounds cool. What I'm just thinking is to the reader. Yeah. It probably just looks like it's printed no it does not you haven't looked at this oh, oh okay it's literally a machine that holds a pen and yeah. writes on a bit of paper and it's been configured so well that it literally looks like someone oh. has handwritten it so like a printer right moving on <laughs> no no then I, I was just i think it's interesting you haven't looked at the examples yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right oh sorry sorry listeners uh but you haven't listened. You haven't seen the examples. No, I, I'm just trying to say, like, if you're actually trying to handwrite letters mm. because um, that's going to get attention from people because you're actually putting in the effort, does it make sense to scale up that process to to print even if it's with a pen? Because then the it's not genuine anymore. Are, okay, are you not going to lose? Let me ask you a question. Mm. Mm. As a small business, if you want that one to one customer service mm-hmm. thing uh, with your customers and you mm. yourself want to speak to everyone mm-hmm. is it then worth when you grow scaling up and, and having a customer service team why don't you just speak to everyone why don't I just because it's not 
it's, n- it's not realistic to do that. Neither is it to write 10,000 letters. But having a customer service team is being honest with the world and saying, God, I'm the leader of this business and I cannot speak to you one-to-one. But deceiving your customers by pretending you've handwritten them a note is different, you know, I think. Whatever. All right, all right, you okay. You re- normally are quite open to my opinion. You really don't like that, I know, do I'll take your opinion. Okay. I just quite liked it. Freelancers, if you want a list of wicked tools that you can use to help you with your business, go to hellobonsai.com. Hello, B-O-N-S-A-I.com. And they've got loads of cool tools. I shared Forward that in the- slash best dash freelance dash tools. Yeah, but you can see it when you go to the homepage. Cool. Um, but I shared that in the Friday Club and quite a few people tweeted saying how useful that was. So I oh, thought cool. um, other people, and you don't have to be a freelancer, it's just cool tools it's just related good to tools that can yeah save you time doing stuff and make things easier and cool do you, lloyd do you ever want to record your screen things that are going on your screen for free really easily um uh, i think to, to help this yes well screenity you can do that it's good. a google chrome plugin that's completely free and you can add an annotation to videos and stuff oh that is um, discovered that from matt navarro in his weekly email last oh, week nice um, nice. Have a guess. I've got one one final thing, maybe. Okay. You know, every social media platform is adding stories. Guess what um, tool has been testing stories? <laughs> is it Dan Delton? <laughs> tool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, guess what tool has been testing? Well, not stories. not tool, just an a- app. Guess what app? Um. Oh, I don't know what. Spotify. <laughs> really? Yeah. How what, the same that? kind of thing as yes. in oh just listening to a song yeah okay interesting I thought you were going to say do you, do you know what I should have guessed because I had it in my head and I just said I didn't have a guess Tinder ah I've never used Tinder so it might have stories honestly never used Tinder <laughs> um, cool so that there's Spotify have been yeah. I do it's weird this stories thing isn't it like every platform just going mm. for it is it a thing that platforms are going to have to do to survive because people like it so much, or is it just, is it just corporations going? Everyone else is doing it. We should we yeah. should manage risk and put yeah. stories on. Have you seen the memes with like Excel uh, yeah. having stories on the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure my uncle Nick sent a picture of that once. Did he? Yeah. In our family WhatsApp. Don't know if he understood that, but he sends lots of memes of varying uh, comedy. <laughs> uh, most of them quite low. <laughs> well that brings us to the end of another amazing podcast episode you sound, I do like, say so myself. You sound like you're sarcastically saying that no 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 well you never know i mean i enjoy doing this but who knows yeah well i do know by the numbers actually i know exactly which ones perform well because i actually look at the numbers now yeah good was that your alarm going off that was oh you are so unprofessional do you know what dan this episode 25 might be the last i've had enough you haven't respected my opinions. <laughs> um, in the last episode, you, you couldn't even Google definitions, right? <laughs> and now your alarm's going off. You know, who knows if there's going to be an episode 26? There will be. Me. There will be next week. See you then. Bye. <laughs>